Hello there. I'm going to assemble our science department Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. This is an 8 inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope made by Mead. Uh, we've had it here in the department for oh a long time, more than 25 years. It's a nice scope. I've recently put a new um, mount on it, which I'll show you in a minute. But I thought it might be interesting to show you how I assemble this thing in the dark. So let me start by getting the tripod over there and uh, we'll show you how the parts fit together. So there you go. All together. It takes all together maybe 10 or 15 minutes depending on how picky you are, depending on whether or not everything cooperates. So what I want to do now is show you some of the parts of the telescope and uh, kind of show you the detail of how you might use this particular telescope, how you change eyepieces, how you focus and that sort of thing. Um, different telescopes are set up a little bit different and this Schmidt Cassegrain design has been around for oh, 40 years or so now. Uh, it's a pretty common design. As I said, Mead sells this 8-inch telescope, and they have a current version of it as well. There's another company by the name of Celestron that makes them. There's lots of telescopes out there. There's a company called Orion, which is found at telescope.com. Yeah, that's their web address. They got that web address, telescope.com. This is the Atlas equatorial mount that I bought. I must have bought it maybe six, seven years ago or so, which is a what's called a go-to mount. And I want to show you kind of a little bit of how that works. One of the first things I'm going to need to do is to make sure that the polar axis is aligned. You'll see this, there's this cap that unscrews on the back here. And on the polar axis is a little telescope. You look through that eyepiece there and sight it up so that that axis points up towards the North Star Polaris. So this axis right here is parallel to the Earth's rotational axis. So when I plug this thing in and turn it on, uh, the telescope turns in precisely the opposite direction that the Earth is turning. So the stars seem to track. They seem to be stationary in the telescope. If you're going to get a telescope, you really do need one that tracks like that. Um, so this, this old type of German equatorial mount, as it's called, uh, is an equatorial mount. It, it's, it's parallel to the, well this right here is parallel to the Earth's equator. It's actually parallel to the polar axis too. So that's what you need in order to take long exposure photographs. And this is the actual hand controller here. Lots of buttons, don't be intimidated. Uh, basically you can slew the telescope up or down, north or south. So if you're looking in the eyepiece and something's not exactly in the center, you can move the telescope slightly one way or the other that way. The other thing that this particular mount does, which is pretty cool, is that you can find it. I've set it up so it knows what time it is and where my observing location is. So I can push this planet button here and I can scroll down through various objects here. And let's say I want to observe uh, the planet Mars, for example. Now let's go see the moon because the moon is out tonight. I scroll down to the moon, I hit enter. It tells me the right ascension and declination of the moon right now because it knows where it is and hopefully it knows where it is. And then I push enter and the question is view object. I say yes. And you can see this is pretty cool. The telescope is now moving all on its own, pointing towards the moon. That's assuming I aligned everything properly. So the telescope's pointed at the moon right now. And what I have in the back of the scope is a diagonal which makes it a little bit more convenient to look at some things. Uh, right now I have in here, I have an eyepiece which says 26 millimeters on it. That's the focal length of this eyepiece. The focal length of the telescope itself, and remember this is a folded optical system, so light goes down the tube, bounces off a mirror down here, bounces off a second mirror. Uh, the two mirrors are different focal lengths. One's a negative, one's a positive focal length whatever, um, which basically gives you a telescope that has a focal length, as it says up in front here, of 2,000 millimeters. 
All right, so when I look at the moon, how much bigger do things look in here than naked eye? 2,000 divided by 26. What is that, about 80 times magnification? Yeah, something like that. You do the math. Please do the math. Um, oh, there it is down there. Yes, there's 2,000 divided by 26. Thank you very much for that. Um, so the magnification depends on what eyepiece you put in here. Um, hang on a second. Let me show you some of the other eyepieces that I have. Ah, here's my secret observing box that I have all my eyepieces in. So I have one, two, three, four, five eyepieces, six, seven eyepieces. I have three Barlow lenses. Oh, I've got to explain what Barlow lenses are. Here's an, uh, an eyepiece that has a focal length of only seven millimeters, 2,000 divided by seven. Boy, that gives you some magnification. What I also have in here is a little set of crosshairs so that when I'm trying to do photography, and trying to point the telescope and keep the telescope pointed, I can put the star right in the middle of the crosshair. So that one's kind of neat. That's my guiding eyepiece. Uh, I have a 12.7 millimeter eyepiece. Uh, these are 30 millimeter eyepiece uh, made by Bosch and Lom. There's an 18 millimeter eyepiece. Uh, this is one that I got at an army surplus place. Uh, this I think was some, from some big Navy binoculars or whatever. So that's look at the size of that. The lens there, it, 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 it gives you a very wide field of view when you're looking through the telescope. So that's kind of neat. I've got other things in here too, including, ah, the red flashlight. Never be without a red flashlight. The red flashlight you use at night to keep your night vision. Uh, and there's some discussion about this these days, whether or not you really need a red light. But uh, it has been traditionally true that when you have a red flashlight and you're looking at star charts or whatever at night, um, looking at a red light doesn't keep you from seeing in the dark. Oh, speaking of star charts, here's the other thing that every observing kit should have. A star chart. This is what they call the pocket sky atlas. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to have pretty big pockets for this, but the original was bigger than this. Um, actually, the, big, the original was smaller. These are kind of nice plastic coated waxed pages so they don't get wet and all crinkly and foggy and misty nights. So you can have views of different parts of the sky here. Uh, here's the section of the sky right near the North Celestial Pole. Uh, there's what we call the Little Dipper or some minor. So that's kind of neat. You need that uh, star atlas because one of the things that, that you see on there is things like where all the galaxies and globular clusters are. So I find myself referring to that from time to time. The other thing I might want to show you here, and I think I'm going to do a different video, a second video for this. This is kind of neat. This is an adapter that will screw onto my camera. I take the camera lens off. This is an adapter that you can get, once again, not, it sounds like I'm selling things for Orion Telescope Center, but it's a really good site. It has just about everything you need. This will attach to the camera, and then I have what's called here a visual back, Oops, this is the one I actually want to use here. This thing will screw into the back of the telescope. Your camera adapter threads onto that, and that's at the back of the telescope. So you're actually using the mirror of the telescope as a huge camera lens, a 2,000 millimeter focal length camera lens. And this is on your telescope, um, or on your camera rather. Uh, some of the pictures that I have um, for my class that I've presented to you were taken at the prime focus with this. This is a good way to take pictures of the moon, for example, because you don't want to magnify the moon that much. All right, so let me put things back here. Everything fits, we hope. This is another kind of neat thing I want to show you. This is called an off-axis guider. This part fits in as an eyepiece would fit in. This back here is where your camera is. And check this out, there's a tiny little mirror in here that sends some of the light off to the guiding eyepiece. So here's my guiding eyepiece with the uh, crosshairs on it. I would insert that in there. Most of the light gets through to the camera, but some of it comes off to the side 
and I can adjust the position of the telescope over five, ten minutes or whatever to make sure that it tracks accurately. That's how you get really nice exposures at prime focus. So here's my trusty 30 millimeter eyepiece. 2,000 millimeters divided by 30. I can do that one in my head. That's about 66 times magnification. I kind of try to use this as, as much as possible. Um, it, it, there's no good reason to magnify the image too much unless you have incredibly clear, steady skies. And I very rarely go above maybe one or 200 times magnification. You'll notice I took my glasses off because, of course, I can focus with this silver knob back here. And I don't have to worry about my eyeglasses getting in the way. The only problem with that is that, hey, if you have astigmatism, that will still affect the shape of the star images up there. Um, I guess there's a way that you could correct your eyepieces for your astigmatism, but, well, most of them don't come that way. So there you go. Let's pretend that I am observing the moon. The last thing I want to show you, which is kind of neat, is I have, in fact, found a 12-volt power supply. And you notice when I was setting the thing up, I didn't know where to plug it in. So I've got it plugged in, and I have it turned on, and the telescope is tracking the skies. But you can't tell that because uh, it doesn't move that fast. So let's, through the magic of photography, let's go to the time lapse.